Hello everyone, my name is Bunny Punia. It's a brand new day, it's a new location, and of course, we have a brand new car for a review today. Now, the Indian crossover hatchback segment has been on fire. People can choose between the Cross Polo, the Etios Cross, the i20 Active, and the Punto Aventura. And the newest entrant to this segment will be from Maruti. It's called the S Cross, a highly anticipated car for this year. But let me clear up one thing Maruti is positioning the S Cross as a premium crossover which means it will not be in the same price band as the current crossover hatchbacks, but will compete with their subcompact SUVs like the Duster, Terreno, EcoSport and the Hyundai Creta price-wise. So can the S-Cross justify all that hype? Well, to find out just that, we are in the beautiful countryside of Nasik and have the 1.6 version of the S-Cross. The S-Cross will draw attention from two kinds of customers. Those looking at a crossover hatchback as well as a compact SUV. This also means it will need to satisfy a variety of consumers who will walk into showrooms with a variety of demands. To begin with, let's start with the design first. One look at the S-Cross and you immediately recognize it to be a Maruti Suzuki offering and that is because the front looks a lot like the SX4. However, that's about the only similarity that the S-Cross bears with any other Maruti product. The front is dominated by huge headlamps that come with standard HID projectors, daytime running lights and auto function on the top-end alpha version. We also love the chromed two-slate grille with the Suzuki logo and the slightly raised and muscular bonnet. The S-Cross also gets silver skid plate garnish at all four ends. Wrapping up the front design is the fog lamp housing with sporty chrome inserts. Look at the S-Cross from the side and you realize it's actually an overgrown full-sized hatchback. There is ample front overhang and the ample 2600mm wheelbase helps liberate space on the inside, but more on that later. Outside mirrors are door mounted and look nice. At the rear, the S-Cross gets split tail lamps and minimal badging. There is no overdose of chrome and we love this minimalistic execution. The S-Cross comes with a ground clearance of 180mm, which is actually less than the i20 Active crossover. All versions come with a 205x60 R tyres with alloy wheel standard on the Zeta and Alpha versions. These however, don't look sporty but rather sober. So while design-wise the S-Cross might not be the most beautiful crossover in India or the most appealing to prospective customers, things on the inside are a lot better. I'll start with the space first. There is ample shoulder room, lot of headroom and of course ample legroom as well. There are places to keep your knickknacks in front of the gear lever under the armrest and of course you get couple of cup holders and very generous bottle holders. The seats themselves are big, comfortable and supportive and the leather quality on the top end versions is really nice. Now talking of features, we are driving the top end S-Cross and this will give you stuff like keyless entry and start stop, auto dimming interior mirrors, auto fold outside mirrors, a 7 inch display that is touch screen and gives you GPS navigation, a comprehensive driver information display system, steering wheel with controls for the infotainment system, for Bluetooth and of course a first in segment cruise control. So things up front are very nice. Time to check out the back seats. To start with, you sit slightly higher as compared to the front seats which means visibility is really nice. In fact, the overall feel of the cabin from the rear seats is very nice. Now like the front seats, even the rear seats are very comfortable. You get your own armrest, you get your cup holders, generous bottle holders and space again is really class leading. Lot of shoulder room, ample headroom and again knee room is simply phenomenal for this class. The only thing missing for rear passengers are AC vents.
the S-Cross comes with a decent boot space of 353 litres and this can be increased to 810 litres with the rear seat back folded. While the space is enough for weekend trips, we would have preferred a lower loading bay. To wrap up the interiors, here's a quick look at some of the standard features in the stop in alpha version. Crossovers are meant for people who like going beyond the usual weekend trip to a tourist location and might want to explore the unexplored. The S-Cross, even with a 180mm clearance, does manage to take you places where there's no road around. The Torquay engine and the JK Alonso NXT tyres come handy when you want to go in an adventurous mood. Now a big and heavy crossover like the S-Cross is not supposed to handle very well. However, in this regard, the S-Cross can surprise you. It is nimble for traffic use, it is sorted at highway speeds and of course, it can take a bit of off-roading as well. On tarmac, the S-Cross feels a tad on the firmer side, but that's with the load of a single passenger. We are sure with four on board with their luggage, ride quality will be far better. Maruti is offering the S-Cross with the choice of two diesel engine options, a 1.3 and a 1.6. There is no patrol as of now, no automatic and no optional all-wheel drive. Now the 1.3 is the same one that has been powering cars like the Ritz, the Desire, the Artiga and the Sias. What we are driving is the bigger, is the larger 1.6 motor. Now this one comes mated to a 6-speed standard manual transmission. It's not really very smooth or soft. However, at the same time, for the last couple of days, we have had no complaints whatsoever. Now, there is a bit of turbo lag under 1800 RPM. However, once you get going, this engine can be very enjoyable and addictive. Here's a quick look at the engine specs of the S-Cross. To sum it up, the S-Cross comes across as a balanced package. It looks nice, if not very stylish, has a very spacious cabin with a long list of standard features. It comes with a reliable 1.3-litre diesel and a very torquey 1.6-litre diesel. Has good dynamics and most importantly comes with Maruti's trusted brand value. To make the buying process a premium experience, Maruti will only be selling the S-Cross through Nexa dealerships that will have a personalised touch to the entire process that a customer goes through. With the S-Cross, Maruti aims to create a new segment, that of premium crossovers. Will it succeed? Well, the product has the capability and the only remaining factor is the pricing. Subscribe to the Kardeko YouTube channel to know the S-Cross's pricing once it is launched later this month.